Alright guys, this is a long plane review for Chase HQ2, the arcade coin op, released by Tato in December of 2007. Now the original Chase HQ, back in the late 80s, is one of my favourite games of all time, both in the arcade and on the Amstrad CPC. I like it more than Outrun. And it's had a fair few sequels over the years, the last one in the arcades arriving in 1992. And then there's 1997's Ray Tracers on the PlayStation 1, which is a Chase HQ game in all but name. So imagine my excitement when I heard that Taito were releasing a new Chase HQ coin opt about 12 years ago. Then imagine my disappointment when I quickly realised I'd never get to see or play it given the state and death of arcades at the time. Fast forward 10 years to 2017 and finally someone has cracked the game and made it playable. And I've only just found out about it, otherwise I'd have done this video sooner. So, uh, don't expect to find this in the main emulator though. This isn't a traditional arcade board that can be dumped easily. This runs on the Taito Type X2 hardware, which is basically a Windows XP PC inside an arcade cab. Though, not as bad as it sounds, this was decent hardware at the time, especially when something like Street Fighter 4 was released using it. Anyway, so this is basically a cracked PC game and is just an executable file you run and you can navigate through the folder structure finding all the video and audio files too, which will be very handy here on this video and more on that later. But uh, don't ask me where to get this game, I'm sure you can find this with a quick Google search. So let's boot the game up and get things started and I'll let the track sequence run in full for you. Now I'll comment as we go along here and give more of a review and summary after we've completed this long play. But if you want to watch the long play without my commentary and review and me jabbering away over the top of it, then I will provide a link in the description below to an unlisted video of just that for you. And here we go, here's the uh, track sequence. And of course, if you don't know what Chase HQ uh, is, you drive a very, very fast car, you're a part of the police department, and you've got to catch up with a target vehicle and then ram them off the road. All units, this is Nancy. Don't think this is your average racing game. Yes. It's not just about how fast you can drive. You have to use your specially tuned car to chase down your targets. Take them out by repeatedly smashing into them. It's a bit rough, but that's how we do things here. This isn't a race, it's a chase. There we go. Thank you, Nancy. She's pretty much just said what I said there. Um, but the audio for Nancy is really poor in the uh, dump, so I've had to uh, extract the audio files import them into Audacity and have a bit of a play around and then I've edited in Nancy's audio so you can actually hear it otherwise uh, she's barely audible unfortunately. Oh, I almost forgot. You can temporarily boost your speed and power if you engage your nitros. Yep, nitros. Hands, so you can only hold three of them. Use them wisely, okay? You also can pick up extra nitros throughout the game. Either yeah, that's new to this. The previous um, Chase HQs, there wasn't any extra nitros you could pick up. You started with three, and that was your lot. So look out for shortcuts, and also um, usually with those shortcuts, you'll find the extra nitros. Anyway, you've also got three cars to choose from, so I'm going to cycle through them for you. The police car, three, and each one of them has three different colours. But we're going to start with the. Um, the one with the fastest acceleration and fastest max this speed. This Nancy. We have an emergency. Uploading the latest intel now. And now our mission starts. We're a suspect heading north on the highway at high speed. The target vehicle is a red Italian sports car. We have reason to believe that the suspect has a hostage. Hurry! And here's the first like shortcut, hidden shortcut. I'm going to try and show you all of them that you can find in this game. Some of them don't really help with your time though. I'll come on to that later. We've already caught up with the target vehicle really, really quickly and early in the game. In the original Chase HQ, it took, a, took quite, a, quite a long time. We had a nasty crash there, but the, it, the game puts you back on the road and straight back into the action pretty much, which is nice. 
it does hold your hand quite a bit with your driving. And the nasty crashes aren't always as bad as you think they are. Another Nitro there to pick up there. And generally you want to smash into the, uh, the target vehicle from the side and the front. And you may be able to get a couple of hits in rather than one. And uh, we quickly dispatch the first villain there. So yeah guys, I'm going to try and do this without um, losing a life, i.e. on one continue, one credit, using no other continues. Good job. Yeah, thank you, Nancy. All units, this is Nancy. We have an emergency. The city bank has just been raided. Please move to intercept. The target vehicle is a yellow Bigfoot. It's leaving a trail of destruction behind, so you should be able to spot Nancy. Be oh careful. yeah, let's it's rock! A highly dangerous woman, known as the Texas Some Medic. great music in this game. Nice little guitar riff for that. Anyway, first shortcut here. Drew them out and push pull right, and then pull left here to go down an alleyway, and you'll have already pretty much caught up with the uh, suspect. There you go. Another nitro through there. And you want to attack him here, squash him into the wall there. You might be able to get two, maybe three hits on him. See if the damage meter there. Managed to get two, which is pretty good going. Use the nitros to get just past him or alongside him. Uh, oh, I like how like parts of the car starts to disintegrate him depending on where you hit it. So I did actually hit him quite a bit from the right hand side. So his right tyre's just blown out, and now I think the left one's about to go. I don't know. But yeah, he's only got two more hits. Now, I could actually dispatch him here very quickly, but I thought I'd show you the shortcut here. It hasn't really helped much, to be honest. It's this shortcut you want, because there's a nitro at the end of it. But, um, I actually got well ahead of him now. I had to slow down for him to go into the back of me. Or her, sorry. This is a female criminal, apparently. And you can see my ranking position going uh, up or rather down there. Now in position 10. Good job! On the high score table. All units, this is Chase HQ. Please respond. We have reports of a stolen car. You're not going to believe this. It's on the racetrack. The target vehicle is a race car. The suspect is ex championship racer, Bullet Johnny. Hurry! If he crashes into the crowd at that speed, it's going to be a disaster. Yes. Now on this one, you can actually rack up lots of score and bonus points by smashing into obstacles like traffic cones, which is why I'm doing this here. And there's about there's two shortcuts in this uh, level. Uh, I will show. I will. I will take one of them and just briefly show you the second one without taking it, because that would probably leave me with not enough time to sort of really catch up the criminal without having to waste a nitro. So here's one here to the left. And if you have a full set of nitros, where a nitro would normally spawn, you can pick up like, I think it's 10,000 bonus points. So if you're high score chase, you want to do that. There's the other uh, shortcut. I call it a shortcut, but actually it will take us, leave us quite far behind in the end. But I will show you that at the end of the video as some Hurry bonus up. footage. Time's running out. And yeah, you get um, some extra time then after catching the criminal out on the first hit to then finally ram them off the road. I don't know if the time varies you get depending on how quickly you caught up to them or not. It seems to remain the same. That gave me about 44 seconds to catch him rather than a minute at the first level. So, hmm. Not 100% sure on that one, but you definitely want to try and uh, smash into them from the side and get to those nitros. It was worth crashing there to get that nitro. Hurry up. This is actually a fairly easy level, um, as were the previous two levels. They are actually fairly easy. Just know when when to use your nitros. You usually save them for when you've actually caught up with the uh, the uh, criminal. Good job. All you some really cool textures there on the dashboard. Really rough. The suspects are considered heavily armed and very dangerous. Yeah, this guy's got like uh, rocket launchers on the back of his like uh, lorry, so watch out for that. But yeah, the graphics aren't the greatest in the world, guys. And I thought maybe this might have been an emulation thing or a, how, how the game has been dumped, but no. 
I've seen footage of this running from a real arcade cabinet and it looks identical. There's like these nasty black rough edges around your car and other objects and um, I actually think the graphics are a little bit substandard for the time here. The music and sound effects are brilliant uh, the car handling is is really, really good. I don't think the physics are like true to real life. The game certainly helps you keep the car on the road and in the action for as much as possible. But this is a fun, fast-paced arcade racing game, so we're not after like real handling of a car here. We just want fun, and it, and it does deliver. Now I get a random crasher. There's like a hidden nitro there. And every now and again, it would just actually like crash your car when there was nothing there. Very strange. So there's a little bug there. Now this lorry is a real pain to beat. It's actually really, really tough. What you want to do is boost and get to the front of the lorry, and then get get into it, and and you'll catch like the back wheels for like a second hit. There we go. Just catch it down. If you pull to the left there, there's a hidden thing there with a hidden nitro. There's another nitro just past this bit here. Hurry up. And I actually get too far past the lorry there. And I do it with like one nitro to spare. So that is actually a very, very tough level. And that's the penultimate level. And I made it look quite easy there. Good job. Now Nancy can give you different responses there, depending on how well you did in the level. But this is the final level. Right, this level is really, 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 really tough. And this limousine we're chasing after is like surrounded by three other cars. And you want to avoid touching them as much as possible because they just slow you down. Um, very, very, very tough level. Um, basically, follow what I do here. Try not to hit any, too many cars here because it will reduce your speed down. Uh, this is why you need a car with the fastest acceleration and, and the fastest top speed. Although I've not really noticed much difference between the uh, three cars, if I'm honest with you. There's one that's supposed to be a, a stronger car, the police car. Boost there to start things off there. Hope you get a couple of hits in. But I've not noticed the police car actually doing any more damage than, like, say, like this car. So I stick with this vehicle. Getting as much hit hits in as I can early on on this guy. And he's already down below halfway in. And pull to the right here before the tunnel to get another nitro. You're going to need it. Now, I'm not using it here because I'm actually catching up to him. And again, I'll get as far ahead of him as possible or as close to the front of him. And then slam in from the side. The one thing that will ruin you on this level is the free car surrounding him, slowing you down. So if you knock them out of the way, we've got two about to catch up. I'm going to try and avoid them as best as possible. See, look, two of them just hit me down and really reduced my speed. And now we're about to run out of time. Hurry up. I'll just cut across there, pull to the left, get a nitro here. And then use it to finish him off. That was very, very close. I've only done it a few times. I think I could pretty much do it most times now. Now I know the kind of like the secret and the way to do it. But that was tough. Very tough. All units, this is Nancy. I have an update. All roads leave the border and now ship. Here we so go. The very, very final level. And take the of the like a bonus level. final level. Now we just got to like smash into the helicopter off the bridge. Notice there was a nitro there. So use the nitro to get up to the next nitro and then use that to boost off the bridge into the helicopter. There we go. This helicopter's pulled to the right to so push to the right a bit. Boost and there we go. That is Chase XQ2 completed. On one credit. Oh, thank you, Nancy. I have to say, Nancy is actually quite hot. Not as hot as Mrs. Zypho, but uh, there we go. And uh, this is the rather short ending sequence with all the criminals you captured and their jail sentences. But not much to write home about. Uh, the original Chase HQ had a better ending. 
And uh, now the high score entry, which sadly doesn't work on the uh, crack of this game. But it does at least save and store your scores. It just that means that your name will be A A A A A A. <laughs> now I should add that this game and dump of the game, uh, with a lot of fiddling, does allow network play for two players if you have two PCs on the same local network for some two-player fun. Uh, now, don't ask me how, but there's plenty of discussion about how to get this running on the arcadecontrols.com forum. So I suggest you check that out there and ask any questions there too. So, before we uh, finish, I'm going to start up uh, my review of the game, but first with a bit of info and story behind the making of the game, and I'm also going to show you some additional footage uh, from the game, focusing on level 3, and the shortcut I didn't use in the long play, but actually, really wanna, what I want to show you here is the graphics. Now, you can tweak the graphics a little by pressing the F key in-game, which switches from Gurard shading to normal, which you're going to see now. Um, we lose those horrible rough black edges around cars and objects, but the game looks a lot duller colouring wise, aging it even more, and it's much more obvious on uh, this third level. Um, you can barely make out what Nancy was saying there either at the start, so I had to find the raw audio files which had a .bin extension, and with much faffing I was able to import them as raw data into Audacity and was kind of shocked to find they were low quality 8-bit mono recordings. Worst of all, the Nancy audio is horribly recorded and we even hear people coughing in the background. I mean, really? <laughs> oh, here's the shortcut I didn't uh, use in the long play. Now, the problem with Chase HQ 2 is that it looks like a not so good PlayStation 2 game and that console was released in 2000, seven years earlier. Plus by the time this was released, the PS3 was already out. So no wonder it wasn't a big success. You expect more in the arcades from what you could get at home. And ultimately, that's what killed arcades many years previously. Now the game engine being used is Renderware, which tellingly was very popular in PlayStation 2 graphics programming. Electronic Arts owns Renderware, who discontinued it in early 2007, stating that it was far behind other competitions such as Epic's Unreal Engine. This was the same year that Chase HQ2 was being developed. So, it was being developed on a game engine that was already obsolete. Oh dear. So, a bit more background here. Uh, the game was made at Gamewax Studios and designed by Masaki Kokino who used to work at Konami with his most notable project there being Silent Scope. He joined Gamewax in 2003 and I believe this was his last game for them before moving on to SNK with development still underway on Chase HQ2, which in the end took around six months to complete with a team of five people, them being two coders and three graphics artists, so quite a small team. Um, he wasn't happy that they weren't given more time on the game. Now, Gamewax was based in London and the owners and staff were all Japanese. It was created in 2006 and still technically exists today if you check Company's House, but is dormant. Now, I'm struggling fi to find a good list of all their games, but the one that stands out for me is Wacky Races, based on the cartoon. And the game clearly takes inspiration from Mario Kart, uh, but looks like they stopped making games around 2011. So there we go. This was the last we have seen of the Chase HQ franchise and is an okay game to end on. The spirit still lives on in games like Burnout, Driver and especially Need for Speed Hot Pursuit only a few years ago. Overall, the graphics whilst rough and outdated still look nice and there's lots of great stuff going on. The music is, is fantastic and it's fun but short arcade blast that handles well for a little arcade racing game. So as a fan of the series, I'm left feeling slightly disappointed, but I still had a good time. So for a final review score of this game, I'm gonna give this a seven and a half out of 10. So thanks for watching, and be sure to check out more of my long plays and videos. Thank you, and goodbye. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please click a like below, leave a comment, and also subscribe if you haven't already. And over that way, there's another video for you to check out. Zypho, out.